I will always overcome day two. Guys, thanks for joining. We are going to talk about how to overcome fear, how to overcome intrusive thoughts, and how to pray in a way that engages your heart with God and with truth. You're going to learn how to speak life and truth over yourself to build yourself up in the Lord. I promise you that this will grow your relationship with God, and it will help you grow in faith. And so if that's what you've been looking for, this is the video for you. We're on day two of the 63-day devotional, I Will Always Overcome. Make sure you go back and watch the first episode if this is the first one you've stumbled on. That way you can stay with us as we climb through. And of course, I want to encourage you, comment and give feedback on what you thought of the day's message or, or give some testimonies of what's happened since you've heard maybe yesterday's or the day before. I want this to be a two-way conversation, not just me putting out content, but you guys responding. And if you know, you look at the comments. I've already got to see all of the comments from day one. They are so encouraging people. The light bulb is coming on. That's what I'm hoping for today in day two. So let's get into it. If you have your books, uh, you can open to day two. If you'd like a copy of this book, you can go to Amazon, search for I Will Always Overcome, or you can go to my website, shanewinnings.com, and purchase it there. That is just a quick way to link you back to Amazon as well. Or you can just follow along with us for free for the next 62 days. So here we go. Day two, it says this. I am loved by God. Here's the biblical truth, Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Here's what I said. Jesus loves you. We've heard this, I hope, so many times throughout our lives. But what does it actually mean? Because of the sinful nature we are born into, we cannot get anywhere near God. He is so holy, so perfect, so righteous that we cannot enter his presence as sinners. The Bible even says in Colossians 1.21 that our sin makes us enemies of God. Wow. But here's how much God loves us. He sent his only son to die on a cross so that we could be forgiven. That is love. Even while we were sinners and enemies of God, he loved us. We didn't deserve this love, and we certainly didn't and never could earn it. But he gave it to us anyway. The world might call you unlovable or unworthy of love, but God has already proven how worthy of love you are. Not because of anything you've done, but because of what Jesus has done. Let today be one when you remember what he did for you. He died so that you could live, and he did it all because of love. That is our king. Now, here's the prayer. God, I thank you in the name of Jesus for loving me. I ask that today you would help me see more clearly how to receive your love. I think of who I've been in my past and who I would be without you, and all I can say is thank you. Thank you for choosing me even when I hadn't chosen you. Thank you for loving me first before I was even created. Today, I want to be so aware of your love for me that I am changed from the inside out. I pray that you would help me show your love to everyone I meet. You loved me even when I didn't deserve it, and I pray you will help me to do the same to those all around me. I love you, God, and I give this day to you. Thank you that I will always overcome with you in me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to ask you today, what do you think about God's love? What has God's love done for your life? Let me know in the comments below. What has God's love done for your life? Yes, I know that he saved us from hell. He saved us from destruction. But what has he done? What change have you seen in your life? I would love for there to be just a flood of testimonies in the comment section. So comment below. Let me know what God's love has done. You know, there's some important truths here that I really want to dive into. Because oftentimes when we hear Jesus loves you, we don't think about the depth of what that means. For us to truly understand the love of God, we have to understand what it means that we were enemies of his. Colossians 1.21, it tells us that we were totally separated. We were alienated. We were cut off. We were hostile towards God because of the wicked ways of our minds. You know, I've talked about this before, but when I was in Afghanistan in the war, 
What do you think we would do to a hostile enemy? We were hostile enemies of God, but God did not destroy us on sight. No, God loved us. Why? Because we were God's design. We were God's creation. In the beginning, it says that he created man and he saw that it was good. Now, sin came and completely separated us from God and caused us to look nothing like we were created to, but God never lost sight of us. And I want to encourage you with that truth today. No matter what you've done or what you've been through or or where you've come from, God has never changed his mind about you. He's never lost sight of you. Even if you have lost sight of yourself and you've lost sight of God, maybe you've rejected God your whole life. I want you to know this. God has never stopped loving you. And out of that place of love, he sent his only son to die. And the Bible says that he was pleased to do it. And the Bible also says in Hebrews 12 too, that Jesus chose the cross because of the joy that was set before him. That means despite all of your sin, all of your guilt, all of your shame, everything that you have in your life, all the filth, all the junk that separates you from God, Jesus saw it, but he saw you. And Hebrews 12, 2 says, For the joy that was set before him, he chose to endure the cross. That's right. Jesus saw a bigger picture than your sin. He saw who you would be with his spirit inside of you. He saw who you were created to be. He wasn't looking at who sin made you. He wasn't looking at the sin nature that you were born with, the the fleshly desires that drive your life. No, he was looking at who the Father created you to be. Psalm 139 says that he knitted you together in your mother's womb, that he knew you before you were ever a thought. All of your days were written in his book. The Bible says that we can't even count the thoughts that he has for us, the wonderful, beautiful thoughts that God has. You are so loved by him. And to understand that love, you have to know how how depraved we were without him, how uh, deserving we were of, of hell and of eternal separation, of spiritual death. We totally deserved it. The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. God loved us so much despite us being an enemy and cut off from him that he sent Jesus to die so that we could become the righteousness of God. Today, know this, you are not disqualified because of what you've done. You are not qualified because of the good things you've done. You're not disqualified because of the bad things you've done. The Bible makes it clear that faith in Jesus Christ alone is what saves you. And I want to encourage you today to put all of your faith, all of your hope, and all of your trust in Jesus Christ. Know that you are loved by God. The nails didn't keep Jesus up on the cross. Love did. Jesus totally had the ability to come down from that cross and crush everyone who was mocking him as he died, but he didn't because he knew that by staying on that cross, he would defeat sin, he would defeat death, he would defeat hell, he would defeat Satan, and he would make a way for you to become a child of God. Now that you are a child of God, walk in that truth. Know that you are loved and walk in that love. If you are not a child of God today, give your life to Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you to ask him into your heart or pray a prayer to go to heaven. I'm telling you to lay down your life, your desires, and the ways that seem right to you and say, Jesus, I will follow you. I recognize that I need forgiveness and it only comes through your blood. I put my faith, my hope, my trust in you fully. You are my Lord. I don't want to be my own Lord. I thank you for forgiving me of my sin. I could never be forgiven of my sin anywhere else. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the only way to God. I could never get to God without you. Confess that, walk in that, and you will be made into a new creation. God bless you guys. Thanks for joining. Listen, tomorrow we're going to be at it again. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell so that you turn on notifications. That way, when I post this new episode, you get an update. And I've been inviting people. You know, this book is only $10 on Amazon. It's already incredibly cheap. I was told to charge more. I said no. God told me to charge $10. 
I am doing this for free on YouTube every single day for 63 days. If you feel led, consider giving a one-time donation of $2.50 or $5. That's 25% or 50% of the cost of a book just to help us keep going, to help me to keep making this content full, uh, full time and doing things like this for you guys. You can do that at any of the links in the description. I want to just pray as we close and, uh, let me know what you thought of today's episode, today's uh, walk through day two. You know, the love of God, it might not seem mind blowing to you, but if you dwell on it, it will change everything. You will no longer be insecure. You will no longer be striving because you will already know that you are affirmed and loved by God. You won't seek it out in the world. You won't try to earn it from people. And you definitely won't try to be God's perfect employee earning his love. You need to know that you're already loved. You can tell someone who's really been with God because they are so secure in who they are and in all situations. If that's what you want to be like, I want to encourage you, spend more time with Jesus. Amen? Let me pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your great love for us. God, I pray for a revelation over every person watching this video that we would truly begin to understand even just a fraction of the love that you have for us. God, thank you that your love is what sets us free. Thank you for demonstrating that love, not just being a God of talk, but a God of demonstration and power. We worship you, we honor you, and we give you glory in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen, guys. Thanks. We'll see you tomorrow.